Hey everybody and welcome back to Empty Pockets Ironworks. For this demonstration video, as you've seen from the title, we're going to be doing a feather hook. Uh, this is a relatively easy project. You don't necessarily have to have a shop full of tools to do this. You just need an angle grinder, a uh, little bit of elbow grease, and a heat source. You can use an oxyacetylene torch or in my case using the forge. Uh, if you don't have access to a forge, you can do this cold as well. Uh, for the material, as you've seen, we're just using a piece of 3 quarter inch angle iron. It's cut at 10 inches. I measured in 4 and a half inches just to make a spine. And as you can see, on both sides, with it being 8 inch thick, I'm just kind of rough outlining the feather itself. And this is the, the vein. There you can see from both sides. And uh, then we're just going to go ahead and cut that out with an angle grinder. Once you've got the basic shape roughed out with the cutoff wheel, you can go ahead and clean up the edges with either a file or in this case a, a flap disc. I think I'm using an 80 grit here and it's uh, not real aggressive. You just want to get the burrs off. As I said, you can use a file um, and you don't necessarily have to do that either. Uh, a lot of this will come off with uh, the hammering after you put it into the forge if you do use a forge. Now I do need to say that this is a relatively common blacksmith item or just a, a common item in general amongst uh, people that do this type of work. Uh, this is just my own way of doing it. Uh, you can hot cut these edges. You don't necessarily have to use a grinder. Uh, I've watched demonstration videos. In fact, that's how I got the idea to do this. So in no way, shape, or form is this an Empty Pockets exclusive. Um, lots of people do these and this is just my way of doing it. Uh, it's relatively fast. From start to finish, I can make one of these in about 15 to 20 minutes. And so if you're looking for something for markets that's uh, uh, eye-catching and appealing, and it turns out beautiful, uh, maybe you want to give it as a gift. This is a really neat project, and in all honesty, it's a really neat beginner blacksmith project. Uh, you get to utilize not only hammering techniques, but you'll also get to do... Uh, hook forming, tapering, that sort of thing, which you'll see here in a little bit. Uh, for what we're doing now on the Peter Wright anvil, you can see I just flattened it out. Uh, I'm making sure not to really flatten down the point of or the, the center of the angle iron. You just want to flatten out the sides there, you can see. Now I've actually got a jig made right here, you can see it. It's got half inch round stock welded together on a plate on both sides that locks into the vise. And uh, although I use this for leaves and other texturing and uh, shaping items in the shop, I found that it works out perfect for making these. You can kind of keep your, your spine or vein centered and you can keep it in good shape. Now from there we're just going to go along and I use a, a bunch of different hammers. You can see over on the left on the other anvil there's a, a tomahawk chipping hammer. and um, that's got a cross and a vertical peen on both sides. Here I'm just using a small one pound cross peen hammer and uh, basically I'm just going to put in the design with those. 
Uh, one of the videos that I watched, absolutely beautiful the way it turned out. Uh, the gentleman used a cold chisel to put in the detail. And it didn't have as many strike marks in it. And this is just my particular way of doing it. I don't like to copy anybody exactly. So here you can see we took another heat. Now, after I've gotten the bigger textures in from the one pound, I'm using this sharpened tomahawk and really kind of laying in some fine line detail. And momentarily we're actually going to lock this back in the vise and I'm going to use a cold chisel while it's hot and just kind of put in a little detail on the outside edges. There's really no rhyme or reason, there's no right or wrong way. You can do this however you want and uh, always make sure to give it a good brush. And again, if you don't like the center, if you've made a jig, or even just using the top of a vise, like this vise here, this old reed vise, you could shape up that center vein again if need be. But uh, here with it hot, I'm just going to do this on both sides. Um, like I said, there's really no rhyme or reason. Uh, using the hammer, you can kind of knock those out and give it a little bit more depth and dimension, which is kind of a nice touch. And then, of course, it goes back into the forge. Here we're going to start drawing out the vein, or the taper itself. And uh, on the end, you want to make sure that you don't hammer on it too much while it's cold. It will try to split on you. Uh, it's already got a natural split down the center because of it being angle iron to begin with. So you can leave that. Uh, what's nice about this is it gives it kind of a uniform shape. It really does resemble a feather. So there you can see the end is starting to get uh, cold, it's turning blue. We're going to put it back in and then uh, pull it back out for another heat. And I should have edited that part out, I'm sorry folks. There we go, nice and hot. And we're going to bring that taper back down, or continue to bring it down I guess I should say. And uh, then we'll just start rocking it back and forth, very much like making a leaf draw out the taper a little ways and then on the next heat we're actually going to just make a standard uh, rollover on the edge using the edge of the anvil just like you'd make a regular homestead style hook just continue to drag it you're not really striking it hard you're just kinda glancing the face of the hammer off of it and then rotating it around I try to make these look as exact as possible every time I do a hook it's just my own style. Uh, sometimes I'll try to get a little fancy and I'll make it a little bit longer so that it kind of turns back out. And uh, from here we're going to heat it back up and then to put the hook bend in it uh, we're going to utilize another jig that I've made. And uh, this is just a really simple, you can use rod, you can use rebar, you can use pipe and just uh, if you have access to a welder you can make yourself one of these little hook bending machines or jigs, excuse me. It works uh, really, really well. And uh, I do apologize for the rambling in this video. I'm trying to do this in uh, as little uh, cuts as possible. The software that I'm using for my video editing is uh, subpar at best. And uh, it uh, does not like it when I edit in multiple video uh, dialogue sequences. So here you can see we pulled it around. You can kind of straighten it back up with it being either hot or cold. This is just mild steel, so it does have some flex to it. And I haven't uh, cooled it off in the dip tank yet. So from there, we're going to go to the dip tank once I get it straightened out to uh, what I like. And then it's just a matter of cleaning up. So I'll leave you to watch. I've talked long enough. And uh, then I'll chime back in a little bit. Now this portion is pretty self-explanatory. I'm just basically cleaning up the hole. As you've seen earlier, we just drill it from the opposite side. And uh, I'm using just a brass wire wheel. Uh, as far as your finish is concerned, this one will be clear coated, but you can utilize any technique that you want. These can be painted. 
Uh, they can be cleaned up and just shined and then put out to rust, which would look really cool as well. Um, typically, I clear coat everything because you never know what the consumer is going to use it in. They might use it outside. They might use it uh, indoors next to a humidifier. You don't want them to purchase something and then it be rusty in you know, a short amount of time. So give it a good cleaning. Um, like I said, this one will be clear coated. And here in the next few slides, you'll see the finished product. So with that, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the video again. Uh, as I said, this is not my idea. This is not an Empty Pockets exclusive. Uh, this is something that uh, a lot of different metalsmith, blacksmith, artists do. And this is just my interpretation of it. So I hope you enjoyed. Smash that like button. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends about us. Um, like I said, I'm a small-time guy on a budget trying to do uh, what I can. And if you enjoy this, make sure that you let me know in the comments. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next time. Remember to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash EP Ironworks. And uh, there's links to our Instagram there as well. And again, thank you.